What is up guys, Restless Dude here and welcome to Season 2 of the Arsenal Career Mode. It was a relatively successful first season with Arsenal as we managed to win the Premier League. We could have also added the Europa League trophy but unfortunately we fell short to PSG. But hey, forget about the Europa League, this season we're gonna build a team that's capable of winning the Champions League as that is exactly what the board want from us, to win the Champions League this season. So before we kick off season 2, help the channel grow by clicking the like on the video and subscribing, that'd be greatly appreciated. So I've already made one change to our team and that is the formation, we're gonna go with a 4-3-3 defend formation, but Odegaard is still gonna play as a cam. And when it comes to improving the team in terms of players, I think I've already decided, I want someone better than Smith Rowe in that left wing position. Smith Rowe just hasn't been that threat I expected him to be. So yeah, sorry Smith Rowe, but we're gonna transfer list to you, you'll need to find another club. And just look at the budget we're working with, 217 million pounds. We can easily sign anyone for that left wing position. And there is one man I wanna sign for that left wing position, and that is Vinicius Jr. Arsenal and Real Madrid do have a good relationship in terms of uh, player transfers. After all, Real Madrid sold Odegaard to them. And look at how that turned out to be. Odegaard is now captaining Arsenal and is arguably their best player in the team. So I figured why not sign another star from Real Madrid. I mean Vinicius is better than Smith Rowe in practically every department. Base, shooting, dribbling, you name it. So Vinicius could cost us up to 150 million pounds but you saw our budget. We can easily make this transfer happen. So you know what? Let's do it. I'm gonna start with a 120 million pound offer. Will Real Madrid accept it? Okay, they want 122 and 10% selling clause. You know what? I'm pretty cool with that, but maybe we can then uh, drop the fee a bit. Let's let's try a 120 million flat and keep the selling clause. And they say yes. So yeah, Vinicius is on the cards for Arsenal. We just need to finish the negotiations with Vinicius himself now. Wow, Vinicius is actually willing to reduce his wages to come to Arsenal. I admire that. Let's just remove one of the bonuses and will this suffice? Yes, it will. Vinicius is officially an Arsenal player. And how can we not have the cutscene for Vinicius? This is a phenomenal signing for us. And even the board thinks this is an excellent deal as we got an A grade for this transfer. And let's not forget the shirt number, Vinicius will be our new number 10. And the best part is, even after signing Vinicius, we still have plenty of money in the budget, 88 million pounds. Not to mention that we plan to sell some players as well, the likes of Smith Rowe, Pablo Mari, Renarsson, Maitland Niles, Nicolas Pepe, etc. So with the signing of Vinicius, I don't see the need to make any more signings right now because the team is looking pretty good as it is. The attack, the midfield, the defense, the goalkeeper position, Everything is secured for us. We have all the depth we need right now. So for now, let's just focus on trying to get rid of these players because we currently have over 40 players at the club. So we sim one month into the season and I just realized that we have the community shield against Spurs to play for. I totally forgot that Spurs won the FA Cup last season. Hence, they're in the community shield final. So we have a chance to win our first trophy of the season, the community shield. And this looks like the perfect game for Vinicius Jr. to make his debut in the Community Shield final against Spurs. Nice, Samiasa wins the ball. Saka, Martinelli, Odegaard, it's Vinicius. And did I expect anything less from Vinicius? Of course he scores on his debut. 1-0 against Spurs in the FA Cup final and the new boy Vinicius Jr. is the one who gives us the lead. Am I surprised? Absolutely not. This is what I expect from him on a weekly basis. He's already made a, co a contribution. Odegaard? Maybe I overplayed. Zinchenko going for a shot? And Zinchenko gets on the score sheet. I can't believe that actually went 10. I didn't really put that much power I felt, but it goes in anyway. Man, 2-0 up against Spurs. Like, look at this. That, that, that didn't have that much power. I thought Lloris was gonna save that easily, but maybe it was because he was a bit off his line. Yeah, that's probably the case. Odegaard. Ndidi. Vinicius. 
And Vinicius Jr. scores again. And it's pretty much an identical goal to his first one. We just pass to Vinicius who makes a run for, uh, into, into the box. And he finds the top corner again. Man, 3-0 up against Spurs. And this is a strong Spurs side. They're, pre pre they're pretty much going with their first team in this match. So yeah, this is a statement from us. A statement from Vinicius, I should say. You know what? I'm just gonna do the visual sim for the rest of this game. This game is done. There's no way Spurs are coming back. Oh no, Vinicius with a light injury. Don't tell me it's gonna be serious. You know what? I'm not gonna risk it. Mudrik will come on for Vinicius. And there we go. It's the full time whistle. We get our first trophy of the season. It's not the most significant. It's not the most significant one, but still a trophy nonetheless. There we go. Arsenal are Community Shield winners. Man, I was afraid of this. It's not a light injury at all. Four weeks Vinicius will be out for. It's a good thing Vinicius will only miss a maximum of three games, but that does include the derby against Chelsea, which is our next match in fact. Well, that's one way to make your debut, scoring two goals and then picking up a 1-month injury. We may not have Vinicius for this game against Chelsea, but we do have our Season 1 signing, Modric, who can come in for him, so I'm not that worried. Oh my god, it could actually work for them. Wow, Ramsdale forced to make a good save early on. Modric out to Saka if he can get there, which he does, Saka. And Jesus gets a simple tap-in to make it 1-0 against Chelsea. Maybe I could have taken it with Saka himself, but I didn't want to take my chances with Mendy in goal. Yeah, sometimes he, he does save uh, these chances, so I'd rather not take the chance and just uh, go for the save option. And it worked in the end. Uh-oh, Sterling is running through me. Oh my god, he actually goes all the way. Well, Sterling does have a lot of pace on him, so yeah, he's almost as tricky as Mbappe when it comes to uh, stopping him. Well, it's 1-1 against Chelsea. Odegaard, out to Tierney. Jesus, Mudrik, is he onside? Yes, he is! Mudrik is onside, gets inside the box. Cuts it back to Odegaard, and Odegaard with a simple tap-in. 2-1 against Chelsea, we have our lead back. Sterling, Gallagher, Malinovsky, and Ramsdale again forced into a save. Fabio Vieira out to Martinez. Martinelli turns, he gets away from his man. The initial shot is saved, but Mudrik seals the game in the end. And that was a weird way, that was a weird uh, save from Mendy. He, it it's like he was confused uh, in that instance. Like, let's see, what happened there? I was trying to go for a shot at, uh, to the right. Mendy makes an awkward save, to say the least, but Mudri, luckily, at the right place at the right time, to make it 3-1. And the referee is gonna blow the whistle. And that ends as a 3-1 win for us. The perfect way to start the Premier League. Now we have a game against Wolves, but we're gonna try to get by with the highlights. Okay, we have a penalty in the 28th minute. Saka is gonna take it. So let's see, gonna go top left. And that proves to be the right decision. I was thinking top right, but luckily we didn't go with the right. Saka opens the scoring against Wolves. Partey. It's Vieira. Vieira? And Vieira goes all the way to make it 2-0 against Wolves. For once, we score a goal in these highlights from open play. Because yeah, when it comes to playable highlights, I've been pretty poor uh, recently. And there we go! It's a 2-0 win for us in the end. One more game to get through before Vinicius Jr. returns, and that's against Crystal Palace. So we're just gonna quick sim it with our first team. We should get a result. Oh, come on. A 1-1 draw? Our strongest team can't even win against the likes of Crystal Palace. And that draw means we are currently in 4th place behind Liverpool and Manchester City, who won 3 games out of 3 so far. So it's transfer deadline day and we did manage to sell a fair few players, but surprisingly no offers for Smith Rowe. And like I said, I'm pretty happy with the team right now, so I think we'll save future transfers for the January transfer window.
Only 5 hours left on transfer deadline day and we finally get an offer for Smith Rowe from AC Milan for 55 million euros. Of course I'm gonna accept this deal but maybe I could negotiate uh, more money. And the deal is actually done. We managed to sell Smith Rowe for 64 million pounds. We now have a game against Burnley who are back in the Premier League this season. But I'm gonna quick sum this game with my second team because we actually begin our Champions League campaign after this. Can we get a win? Oh come on, a goalless draw? You gotta be kidding me. Anyway, time for the Champions League group reveal. Group A, Manchester City, Juventus, Porto and Shakhtar Donetsk. Group B, Bayern, Man United, Atlanta and Copenhagen. Group C, Atletico, Dortmund, PSV and Rangers. Group D, Barcelona, Leipzig, Benfica and Monaco. And this is our group, Arsenal, Roma, Olympic Marseille and Dinamo Kiev. I think we got a relatively easy group if I'm being honest. Anyway, moving on, Group F, Chelsea, Sevilla, Lyon and Galatasaray. Group G, PSG, Leverkusen, Club Bruges and Bodo Glimt. And Group H, Real Madrid, Inter, Sporting and Salzburg. And our first game just had to be against Roma, arguably the toughest opponent in the group. But on the bright side, Vinicius Jr. will be making his return since getting injured. This could go bad. Nice, Tomiyasu with the interception, and we get the ball away, and we could be on the tower attack now. Odegaard, is Jesus on side? I think he is. Jesus? And we actually scored that chip shot to open the scoring against Roma. Arsenal's first goal in the Champions League since... I, I don't even know. I don't even... To be honest, I don't remember the, the last time Arsenal were in the Champions League. Yeah, it's been a really long while. So yeah, this goal, hopefully the first of many. Jesus. Jesus out to Vinicius. Vinicius out to Odegaard. Odegaard is breaking through. Lays it off for Vinicius. And how is that not 2-0? Come on, Vinicius. You have to score those chances. Uh-oh. Oh, come on, Tierney. You cannot do that. Come on, Gabriel. Gabriel, what are you doing? Man, come on, Gabriel, you gotta do better defending there. Luckily, we have Ramsdale to act as the line, uh, last line of defense. Odegaard, Saka is clean through. Saka, chip shot of the line. Okay, Vinicius may as well go all the way. Vinicius. Vinicius breaks through. And he actually makes it 2-0. To think that he scored this goal pretty much from midfield. Going all the way to the box and then scoring. Man, I have no words. This signing was totally worth the money we paid for. 120 million pounds uh, right there. Okay, that's a bad pass. Jesus. Vinicius. Can Vinicius score another one? He nearly did, but the keeper was ready for it. Fabio Vieira. Vieira out to Vinicius. And Vinicius scores again. 3-0 to sell the game against TS Roma. We're gonna get our first win in the Champions League. 3-0 win at the very least. And there you have it. 3-0 win against Roma to start our Champions League campaign. And who else but Vinicius Jr. to end up as man of the match, scoring two goals in this game alone. Marseille ended up drawing their game against Dinamo Kiev, meaning we are two points clear at the top. Next we have a game against West Ham, which we're gonna play the highlights of. Vinicius Jr. What can we do here? You know what? Let's just go for it. Ah, uh, Ariola makes a good save there. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. West Ham have a free kick in a very dangerous position. Come on, gonna put a man on the line, surely we can't concede that way. Well, Ramsdale in the end forced to make a save. Vinicius on the run. He may as well go all the way if they're gonna play like that. Vinicius Jr., Martinelli? Are you serious? Martinelli, you were supposed to be the hero in that moment. I can't believe this ends as another nil-nil draw. Come on, at this rate we're not gonna win the Premier League for the second consecutive season. Now we have a Carabao Cup game, but this is a pointless competition, so I'm just gonna quick it with my second team. We get knocked out on penalties, but I hardly care about the Carabao Cup, so 
it's no big deal. Moving on, we have a game against Southampton, and I swear, we gotta start winning these highlight games. Vinicius back to Saka, it works, Saka on the run, Saka may as well go all the way, and again we're denied from, from uh, opportunities we're supposed to score. Okay, we have a solo run in the 62nd minute. There's no way we can mess this up. We can't. We just can't at this point. Jesus? And we actually score a goal in these highlight uh, games. It's about time. We should have won that game against... Uh, who was it? Uh, West Ham? Yeah, we should have won that game against West Ham if it weren't for our poor finishing. Are you serious? Southampton get a penalty with two minutes remaining. I swear, if this is how we're gonna get screwed, I'm just about done with this game. Right? Wait, what? Okay... I'll take it, I'm not complaining, but that was so weird. But to be fair, I think he was gonna go right anyway, which Ramsdale would have saved. Hopefully. Well, that's one way to win a highlight game. We're still unbeaten in the Premier League, but that hardly matters when we're 6 points behind the current leaders Manchester City. We're gonna get through one last game in this episode, and it's against Dinamo Kiev in the Champions League. No 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 no, this is not happening. Come on, stop him, stop him, please! Whew, Ramsdale denies them luckily. And that's it, another goalless draw in these uh, highlight games. I think I'm, I've had it, I've just about had it with these highlights. It just goes to show how broken these highlights are. Not, not a single good, good attacking opportunity. We should have gotten a win in that game, but at least we're still top of the group, one point ahead of second place Roma. So that's gonna be it for this episode. Next episode we have huge games against Spurs, Marseille and even Liverpool. And hopefully we'll stop drawing games we should be winning, because the amount of games we've drawn in this episode, too many. Thank you all for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe if you have not, that'd be greatly appreciated. And as for me, restless dude out.